Hi, and welcome to Energy Explained. It's our YouTube channel. It's the father and son YouTube channel that takes headlines from the energy or maybe an economics uh, uh, industry and translates it for you. What's important? What do you need to know? And today we're going to be talking about the hydrogen economy. But, you know, before we do that, uh, Dad, what, you know, we started the channel last week and you've been really active this week, kind of propelling the interest in it. How do you feel about our current, you know, we've had all the friends and family, we have like a hundred views. How, how are you feeling about that so far? Well, I put it on my <clears throat> LinkedIn account and, uh, and I got, I got, Pretty good response. In the past, what I placed there are my blogs. This was the first video site I placed. And I thought we got pretty good. On each of them, I got 350, 400 plus. Uh, but now you want to uh, become like a marketeer, right? Because I'm in marketing. Now you want you want to somehow like, how do we get this so that everyone sees it, right? That's that's the that's the, the question for, for next week, right? But to, for me, it's we're having fun, right? That's the point. Yeah, absolutely. If it, if it wasn't fun, it was, wouldn't be worth doing. Yeah. And so, you know, just to remind our uh, dozen viewers out there, uh, if you're returning, um, what we do here is we talk about energy topics. And my father, Vikram Rao, is an expert in all things energy. He has a PhD in engineering from Stanford. He's the former chief technology officer of Halliburton, so certainly speaks from a place of authority, both, both on the sort of academic energy topics, but also with that perspective of an end energy industry executive. And we're going to talk today about the hydrogen economy. Now, I'm an economist. I know what the word economy means. <laughs> I know what the word hydrogen means. But I really wouldn't even have known where to start with it if you just told me hydrogen economy before you gave me the research notes for this episode. So what you know, what's our current, how would you describe our current economy, how it runs? And what's the hydrogen economy? We're going to talk about that today. What, what, how would you, what's our current economy running on? Yeah, the current economy, we would call it the hydrocarbon economy. And, okay. and what we're referring to in the word economy here is, uh, is how do you get uh, motive power, heat, uh, all those things, the energy requirements for Which the Which is how we live. Life. Right? We, this is how we have how modern we lives, right? We, 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 our homes are heated, our air conditioned, we move around in the world. And what you're saying is we're burning hydrocarbons to do that, ba yes, by and large. By and large, eighty six percent plus something like that. Eighty six percent of of the energy being produced for our way of life, I think somewhere around somewhere there around is that from is from hydrocarbons. hydrocarbons. So now what? Yeah. Now okay, now hydrocarbon. That's a fancy term. <laughs> Sorry, what's a hydrocarbon economy? What, what's hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon is basically molecules comprising hydrogen and carbon. Uh, okay, well, and... okay, I knew that, but <laughs> <laughs> so in the case of oil. There's a long chain molecules. Uh, methane, for example, is a single atom of carbon and four of hydrogen. Okay. Uh, and so these are all called hydro hydrocarbon. Now, even coal is a hydrocarbon, except it's seriously challenged in hydrogen. Okay, so, so it's, it's a carboniferous carbon, carbon uh, hydrocarbon. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's considered a hydrocarbon, but barely. Okay. So every 86% of the modern way of life we live that's energy driven is driven by hydrocarbons, which is coal, natural gas, oil based stuff, all, all of that. The rest of the 14% would come from green electricity, I assume, uh, hydro, hydroelectric, um, wind and solar. Is that right? Yeah. So on electricity per se, a fair bit comes from those uh, in the US, for example, about 20% is nuclear. Uh, and in many countries, uh, hydroelectricity is quite a lot. But if you take the sum total of all of it, which includes transportation, uh, uh, cooking and heating homes, uh, yeah, it adds up to that 86. I, I may be off on that number, but not by much. Okay. And so now let's think about the hydrogen economy. So now I'm going to take a guess now that we're a little more informed that we'll be burning hydrogen or utilizing hydrogen for our energy needs in a variety of ways. Is that the nature of the concept? It absolutely is. So when you burn hydrocarbons, any way you do it, you end up with carbon dioxide and a few other things depending upon which Sorry, just by the is. nature of hydrocarbons, you burn it, you're going to end up with C and O2, uh, fixed together and going up into the atmosphere, which is what creates global warming. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Which is contributed to global warming. And uh, when you burn hydrogen, you get water. 
so uh, so where you to have this uh, this almost utopian concept of displacing uh, hydrocarbons with hydrogen then you have the opportunity for the combustion product to be just water but okay i'm i'm getting sold on it but where do we get today where do we get our hydrogen from well that is a problem <laughs> <laughs> that way about 10 years ago i was I was very bearish on the hydrogen economy. It has been proposed for some time, and I was very bearish because then, as now, okay. uh, the vast majority, and I have to say 95% uh, of hydrogen is from hydrocarbons. So when people said, oh, you know, we, we will put this hydrogen into your car and you will have zero tailpipe emissions, and I'm saying, yeah, but where did the hydrogen come from? And it, it pretty much came from natural gas. So that's then. Now okay. things are changed a little bit. Yeah. So so what's so so ten years ago? I remember reading about fuel cells and the. It's I learned that in high school in the nineties. Now, what's changing? Okay. So now, how can we get our hydrogen from a non-hydrocarbon based source, not from natural gas? Where where does hydrogen come from? Because to my knowledge, it's not just sitting around ambiently for us to capture. Yeah. So hydrogen. It, it, these days it can come from a couple of different ones, but the ones that are most interesting uh, is from electrolysis of water. Water, after all, is hydrogen and oxygen combination. And when you electrolyze it, you produce hydrogen and oxygen. And, and what's made that feasible uh, is uh, surplus electricity in some situations. Okay. And, and, and most of those situations are from renewable electricity. Uh, so that's what's brought hydrogen into the fore, because it turns out that hydrogen from surplus electricity uh, is uh, going to increase in, in volume. Now, you say surplus from green sources. Now, to my knowledge, no power grid in the world gets even a majority or no big power grid gets a majority of their energy from green sources. Even the most advanced ones, it might be 40 percent. So where is that surplus coming from in this equation? Well, it comes from the fact that uh, both uh, uh, solar and wind are diurnal. They are basically uh, the sun. Now you'll never you'll never pass an opportunity is a fancy word, right? Diurnal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, <laughs> see out here in the Netherlands where I live, we learn to not use all the Latin-based words because you can. So diurnal it, it means night and day or something like that. Day, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 periodic, yeah. So basically, I mean, it, the wind tends to blow at night. Yeah. Uh, in many places, uh, uh, offshore not so much, mostly all the time. The sun kind of refuses to shine at night. So, yeah, it does. So yes. So, so what you have is periods of time when you don't have solar electricity and you don't have wind electricity. Mm -hmm. And so it's those periods of time uh, that you need to augment with something else. And then it's the, you may produce too much for any given time. Because you're augmenting loads. with something else. You, 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 instead of producing your 30%, you produce 50 because it's a sunny day. Right. And then the, on, uh, the, on the off times where you're producing, but the load is not there, uh, you've got a surplus. So give, let me give you an example. Uh, Germany gets roughly 40% of electricity from renewables. Yeah. But there are certain days that it gets 75% from renewables oh. and other days that it gets 15% okay. from renewables. Okay. Wow. So, so there you see it. You see the, the Germany is an excellent example of up and down. Uh, they call it the duck curve. doesn't matter what they call yeah. it. But up and down where sometimes it's surplus, sometimes it's uh, negative. Uh, so you need to do something about that. Okay, so now you explain why we have an excess because a 40% supply, it has to have other sources and those sources, if they're going at full bore, you got to do something with the electricity coming off the, the green sources. Now, you know, what are... I've heard some some things that are done in certain places. You pump water to a high place, like in a fjord, but it's really generally not possible to do something efficiently. So, is this where hydrogen comes in? Is this is this returning to that part of the story? It is. So, uh, you you mentioned that's called uh, pump water storage, and that's done a lot in northern Europe. But as you say, that's not ubiquitous. Uh, so, yeah, where hydrogen comes in is you take the surplus electricity and you electrolyze water and you produce hydrogen. You store that hydrogen and then you use it when you need to uh, augment the supply. Uh, so that, th that's, the, that's the basis of the idea. Now you may do other things with the hydrogen uh, if you've got loads of it, but the basis of the idea is exactly what you said. 
that you use the surplus electricity to electrolyze water and produce hydrogen, store it, and then use it for when you need it. Burn it later to produce electricity. But then Burn instead it. of getting CO2, you get water vapor. Right. And one of the hurdles from 10 years ago to now has been uh, uh, cost effectiveness of the electrolysis. Uh, uh, each kilogram of hydrogen takes about 50 kilowatt hours of electricity. Oh. And depending upon how expensive electricity is, uh, that can be prohibitive. Well, electricity costs, uh, costs have come down, uh, especially solar electricity costs have come down. So it's starting to become cost effective to electrolyze water with it. And there's even more research going on to bring that cost down further. And I, I'm bullish on that. I'm bullish on the electrolytic hydrogen cost continuing to come down. Okay, so now we have a scenario where the technology to turn ele excess electricity or purchase electricity into hydrogen um, is improving. Now, what's going on now in places where you have uh, bigger green energy footprints that you're needing to store? So you said, okay, there's the water pump storage method. We now are electrolyzing water to get hydrogen in some places. What are they doing with that hydrogen? Because it sounds like you're saying, for the most part, they're just kind of burning it and doing it, doing electricity production. It's not that economy yet. Walk me through what's going on or the thinking there. Right. So one thing that's going on in Europe uh, uh, is that they are putting that hydrogen onto pipelines, onto natural gas pipelines. Hydrogen is a very small molecule, so it slips into and diffuses out of substances. Yeah. So hydrogen by itself is difficult to transport and can corrode steel. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we have discovered, the industry has discovered that if you put 20% hydrogen in natural gas, then it doesn't do any harm. And actually you can get town gas being supplied uh, which is 20%. And that's what's happening today. The, the, the energy firm Angie uh, in France is doing that uh, as, a, as a pilot in one of the small towns. Uh, and so that's one, uh, one so just possibility. For, we use less natural gas because we're using a cleaner fuel, we're putting it in there and you put 20, 25% in, it's still gonna burn. Okay, uh, we can burn it. We can have other people burn it. Uh, any other options besides burning it? Yeah, so hydrogen, because it's such a light molecule, uh, storage is expensive. Uh, so one method of storage that is being pushed and is happening in some places, but doesn't have a lot of legs yet, is to convert it into ammonia. Uh, so, and the way you do that, you very easily can separate nitrogen from the air. Okay. Uh, it's about 70% nitrogen. Uh, and then react it to make ammonia. Now, ammonia is a very and amo dense ammonia. Liquid. Yeah. Now, you have to remind our, our listeners because they're like me; they don't know a lot about maybe chemistry all the time. Ammonia is a liquid. It is a liquid, and at 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 right temperature and pressure. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're you're converting a light gas into a liquid, and you get it. I'm assuming like exponential more density, and and it it's a very different ball game in terms of how much you can affix there. So now we're in a liquid. What? what sorry, ammonia. It, like I associate that with the thing you keep under the kitchen sink. It, not the most valuable commodity now, but th it, clearly it has more industrial uses than I know about. Yeah. So ammonia actually saved the world uh, back in the turn of the last century. Uh, okay. <laughs> Malthusian Malthus had predicted that uh, population would grow, and he figured that agricultural production would became would stay linear, uh, and he figured that the world would get him, you know, would just starve. Yeah. Uh, and this guy called Haber, France, I think France, uh, Haber in 1908 or something invented the synthesis of ammonia and just changed everything. And so fortunately, Malthus was proven wrong so that, on that. That was the fertilizer for all our food, and it's, it's, it's used in industrial processes. So now we're at the point where, you know, we, the story's kind of coming clear to me is that if we're using um, wind and solar to produce electricity, we have to deal with having excess. Um, if we want to have it be more of our total capacity, we're going to have more excess to deal with. And the first thing you can do with it is just uh, zap some water, turn it into hydrogen and burn that hydrogen and produce power. Maybe fi fix your grid up. You can put that hydrogen in natural gas pipes and have consumers use it as long as there's a s s small enough percentage of it. Or you can um, do some magical process that I don't really understand, affix nitrogen from the air, turn it into a liquid, use it for fertilizer, use it for things like this. But that's not still not quite getting it. That's not quite in an economy. That's like you've replaced ammonia with a cleaner ammonia, a cleaner natural gas. Now, 
Bring me into now the, the hydrocarbon economy. Now contrast it to the hydrogen economy and convince me as an economist it's a full economy. <laughs> well, it isn't yet. But, well, uh, it could be. Yeah, We're hypothetically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, one reason to convert an ammonia is not just to make more fertilizer. It is to transport it. And then you can very easily uh, crack it down back into hydrogen again. And nitrogen goes poof back into the air. Okay. And then the hydrogen can be used for whatever purpose you want. And so ammonia will be used more as a transport fluid than uh, okay. as to do something with the ammonia. Uh, uh, okay. It's just because it'll be cheaper to transport it as ammonia uh, than as hydrogen. And then to back to your okay. point, no, so what well, else do you see, do? I see yeah. where you're going yeah. with it, because if you can move it, then and it can be used so fungibly in energy production, that's what we do with hydrocarbons today. We can move it around from the point of extraction and then we can utilize it. Hey, Justin, your volume has dropped. Did I? Oh, sorry. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. That's right. It, it's a more fungible commodity. And, uh, and so, for example, uh, uh, electric cars can, be, can use ammonia through the, uh, the aforementioned by you uh, fuel cell. Okay. Uh, and, uh, 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 because it's, it's interesting, kilogram of, uh, uh, so if there was enough hydrogen available, um, hmm. then it would it. More, move along electric cars. We're kind of ready for it. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, where it's coming together and we're, we're sort of out of time here is that um, if you want green electricity, you need to deal with excess your opinion, expert opinion, the best way to deal with excess is to turn um, water in, into hydrogen. And then hydrogen, based on its properties, can be liquefied effectively. It can be added to natural gas, can be used in a variety of processes. And it could, in theory, replace the hydrocarbon economy, which we need to do to prevent the climate crisis, right? So this is kind of the path for humanity. Like, it's hard to understate how important this concept is. Yeah, I mean, you, exactly what you said is I agree with. Uh, the word hydrogen economy, I think, is more uh, symbolic. Okay. Whether it will actually replace all of hydrocarbons, I, I certainly won't live to see the day. But, uh, the, but the point is it's heading in that direction. Yeah. And, and if we want to get decarbonize the world, any amount that we take out and replace it with hydrogen uh, is important. Yeah, yeah. Uh Fully, fully see it. Fully see it. Could be a mixed solution. I hear you. It doesn't have to be as extreme as we're saying. What we're demonstrating is how hydrogen could start replacing um, traditional hydrocarbon-based energy requirements. So I hear what you're saying. There's a transition. There. There's right. a radical. I'm saying. Well, look, I, great discussion. Oh, at least for me on my side. Um, let's remind our viewers that you can hit subscribe um, and you can check out other content. And we, of course, appreciate you coming back each week. And we'll see you next time.